The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to worry, I'm not giving the homily. <laughs> I'm just here to uh, ask for those of you that were not able to be at All Saints last weekend, if you could raise your hands just for a moment, and our ushers are going to provide you with the envelope you missed last week, which was our annual Bishop's Appeal for Ministries. And so simply raise your hand, and if you would fill this card out, uh, you can either drop it in the basket at the offertory, when you normally put your offering in, or you can bring it to the Welcome Center kiosk on the way out after Mass. Thank you. And so this morning in the Gospel, we see Christ's pedagogical style coming to play. Pedagogy means uh, the way in which a teacher teaches their students building upon the basics and giving more detail so that the students will be able to receive and retain the material most effectively. So one example of a very basic pedagogical style is in mathematics. Before a teacher is able to teach uh, calculus or trigonometry or even algebra, a teacher must first be able to teach their students how to add and subtract. In order to get to the point where people are literally doing rocket science and neurosurgery, you have to begin with one plus one is two, two plus two is four. That is the very basic, the very basic foundation of mathematics, and slowly a teacher should be able to uh, add on the process of multiplication, division, uh, using exponents, uh, finding for uh, variables, and slowly and slowly you get to the point where someone who was either uh, an incredible genius or an evil villain, or probably both at the same time, you eventually get to the point where mathematics uses not only numbers, but even Greek letters from the Greek alphabet. And so at that point, I have no idea what's going on, but that is the way in which a teacher who teaches mathematics would slowly build up their students' retention and their students' ability to use what they have learned before in order to uh, more perfectly understand the material and more perfectly be able to use it in their lives. Today, we see Christ doing the same exact kind of thing with the law of God. The law of God was first most uh, famously given to the people of God through the prophet Moses. And because of this, the Jewish people, even to this day, hold Moses as the most important prophet and the most important teacher of our salvation history. Moses, it was Moses the one who received the law from God on Mount Sinai. It was he who received the two tablets. 
the first tablet having the first three laws of the Ten Commandments in which we know and share our relationship with God. It is within those first three commandments that we know how best to relate to God and how best to love and serve Him. In the second tablet, the remaining seven commandments are found, and those remaining seven lead us and guide us into a most perfect union and most perfect relationship with each other, which with our brothers and sisters in this world. And so Moses, it is he the one who brought those commandments down from the heights of Mount Sion, Mount Sinai and brought them down to the people in order to bring about a greater and more perfect way of living in this world. Now the Ten Commandments are the uh, addition and subtraction. They are the most basic and fundamental realities of the law that we know within our own hearts. The Ten Commandments provide for us the most basic way of how to love God and how to love our neighbor. And the beauty of the Ten Commandments is that they are so basic that throughout the entire world, almost all cultures throughout all time would be able to hold to the Ten Commandments at the same time, even though there is confusion at times about who God is, about who we are, about how the world came to be. But all cultures throughout the world can hold to the reality that the Ten Commandments teach us how to best live our lives in a human way. For instance, the Ten Commandments hold the commandment that thou shalt not steal. Nobody wants for their things to be taken by another without permission. That is a central human reality that all of us can readily recognize. Thou shalt not lie. No one here ever wants to be lied to. Many of us sadly know what it feels like to be kept from the truth. We can instantly and immediately recognize that that is an offense against us because every person is due what is true. Every person is due to know what the truth of the world is. And so these Ten Commandments, again, provide the basics for living a truly just and holy life. However, throughout history, the religious leaders in, in the Jew, amongst the Jewish people, the Pharisees and the scribes and the priests, they would take time to really dig into the Ten Commandments and to really understand what it was that God wanted for his people. They spent many, many years, many centuries, and many hours in the synagogues reading over the Ten Commandments and wanting to enter more deeply into God's perfect desire for the people. However, at the same time, there were sadly many religious leaders and scribes and Pharisees who would, instead of wanting to understand and follow God more closely, they would look at the Ten Commandments and try to find as many loopholes as they possibly could. Instead of following the Lord more perfectly and more lovingly, they looked for the most, uh, they looked for the lowest bar that they needed in order to uh, technically follow the Ten Commandments, but to do it in such a way that they would uh, come out on top and not actually see what was truly the best for God and for uh, their brothers and sisters in the world. To clarify and to give a greater explanation of the Ten Commandments, of the law of God. Today, Jesus in the Gospel 
He provides for the people the root of what a few of the commandments are actually trying to get at. Jesus, in his pedagogical style, he begins in every uh, section in the gospel today. He begins with what the people had originally heard at Mount Sinai. And afterwards, he provides for them the totality of what that particular commandment means. And so today, he offers to us the explanation between what it means to not murder, what it means to not commit adultery, and what it means to not swear falsely, or what it means to not lie. And so he begins every time saying, you had heard that you should not kill. And so technically in this English translation, this is a fault in the English translation, the original word here is not necessarily kill, but murder. And so there, regardless, the Lord is really wanting to specify and really wanting to expound upon the fact that to take a human life is something that is incredibly serious, something that should be avoided if at all possible. But Jesus does not end there. He says, you have heard it said that you should not murder. But I say unto you, you should not even hold anger or resentment against a brother or sister. You have heard it said that you should not commit adultery. But I say unto you that you should not even look with lust upon a brother or sister. For if you do, you have already committed adultery in your very heart. Jesus today, he is sitting and he is standing before the people as God himself. Because he is, he is expounding in the ultimate sort of authority upon the commandments themselves. We must remember that it was God who gave Moses the Ten Commandments to begin with. But Jesus being the second person of the Holy Trinity, Jesus being the Son of God himself, he has just as much authority to add on to the commandments as God the Father did in the original moment where he gave it to Moses. Now, there is a particular reality here this morning where we see that Jesus, as he has come to liberate the world from sin, as he has come to liberate the world from evil, he does not make the commandments easier for us, but rather, in many ways, he makes the commandments more difficult. He shares the reality that to truly desire to follow God is something that takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of time. And why does he do this? Again, we must consider the fact that the commandments are not merely laws that we look at the bare minimum and that's all we need to do. Because the commandments are based in love, we should always desire to follow them to the greatest ability that we have for love of God and for love of neighbor. When we truly love someone, we don't look for the bare minimum that we need to do. That would show that we believe the other person to be an inconvenience that we would show that we don't actually love this other person all that much. If we look for the bare minimum, to truly love means to truly desire what is best for the other person. And this means to put effort and time into our relationship with that other person. And so today, the Lord gives us the the path, he gives us the guidance of how to best love our God and our brothers and sisters in this world. Again, these ways in which the Lord expounds upon the laws, 
they are not simple they are not easy however if we are open to following our Lord if we are open to loving like our Lord then it is possible to follow the law according not to the letter of the law but according to the love that is found within it. and so my friends today as we very closely come to the time of Lent where this time of Lent is most especially a difficult and strenuous time for us as a Catholic people that we would have hearts of courage that we would have hearts of love that would seek to follow the Lord even when it becomes difficult that we would seek to serve and love our fellow man especially in those more difficult relationships especially in those more most difficult times that we would love like our Lord that we would serve like our Lord and that we would follow the law of God knowing that it is in our best interest in the best interest of our family and friends and in our best interest in building and deepening our relationship with our Holy Savior. I believe